gather this morning to complete our three days worship service that we began on Friday night. This morning we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Uh, hopefully you have a bell or something else that rings. Uh, when we, we get to the point um, of announcing the resurrection, I'll invite you to, uh, to ring your bells along with me. That's usually the time in this service when all the lights come on in, this, in the nave. Um, if we timed it right, maybe the sun will come up right at that point. Or maybe not. Uh, since we don't have bulletins or PowerPoint out here, uh, the assisting ministers and I will prompt you uh, for all of your responses. Of course, there are a few that you already know. The Lord be with you. And you. See? Um, we will be sharing communion a little bit differently than usual. Uh, you should have received a communion cup as you came in. Did everybody get a communion cup when you came in? Okay. Uh, hold on to that for now. When we reach the time of communion, uh, we will all share communion at the same time. Um, if, uh, if you haven't used these before, uh, one side of them has the bread in it, the other side has the wine in it. Um, and there is a receptacle uh, as you leave that you can drop the, uh, the empty. If you, if you haven't been to an Easter vigil service before, I uh, just want to give you a quick uh, heads up of what, of what is to come. Uh, the order of worship goes like this. We're going to begin with something called the service of light, where we light the paschal candle to represent Christ's light in the world. We'll then move into the service of the word, where we will hear several long stories from scripture. Then the service of baptism, where we will remember and affirm our baptism. And finally, the service of communion, where we will hear a sermon and share communion before going out into the world to serve. I'm glad you're all here today. Let us begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Sisters and brothers in Christ, on this most holy night, when our Savior Jesus Christ passed from death to life, we gather with the church throughout the world in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of Jesus Christ. Through light and the word, through water and oil, bread and wine, we proclaim Christ's death and resurrection, share Christ's triumph over sin and death, and await Christ coming again in glory. The light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. When we say, when we say the light of Christ, you say, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to, thanks God. Be to God. The light of Christ, thanks, thanks be to God. God. The light of Christ. Thank you, God. Let us pray. Eternal giver of life and light, this holy night shines with the radiance of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given us in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, and may shine as a light in the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. When God began to when God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was without shape or form, 
It was dark over the deep sea, and God's wind swept over the waters. God said, let there be light, and so light appeared. God saw how good the light was. God separated the light from the darkness. God named the light day and the darkness night. There was evening and there was morning the first day. God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters and set to separate the waters from each other. God made the dome and separated the waters under the dome from the waters above the dome. And it happened in that way. God named the dome sky. There was evening and there was morning the second day. God said, let the waters under the sky come together and into one place and that the dry land can appear. And that's what happened. God named the dry land earth and he named the gathered waters seas. God saw how good it was. God said, let the earth grow plant life, plants yielding seeds and fruit trees, bearing fruit with seeds inside it, each according to its kind throughout the earth. And that's what happened. The earth produced plant life, plants yielding seeds, each according to its kind, and trees bearing fruit with seeds inside it, each according to its kind. God saw how, go how good it was. There was evening and there was morning the third day. God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. They will mark events, sacred seasons, days and years. There will be lights in the dome and the sky to shine on the earth. And that's what happened. God made the stars and two great lights, the larger light to rule over the day and the smaller light to rule over the night. God put them in the dome of the sky to shine on the earth, the rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. There was evening and there was morning the fourth day. God said, let the waters swarm from living things and let birds fly above the earth up in a dome of the sky. God created the great sea animals and all the tiny living things that swarm in the waters, each according to its kind, and all the winged birds, each according to its kind. God saw how good it was, then God blessed them. Be fertile and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. There was evening and there was morning the fifth day. God said, let the earth produce every kind of living thing, livestock, crawling things, and wildlife, and that's what happened. God made every kind of wildlife, every kind of livestock, and every kind of creature that crawls on the ground. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make humanity in our own image the, to resemble us so that they, make, they may take charge of the fish and the sea the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the earth, and all the crawling things on earth. God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and master it. Take charge of the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and everything crawling on the ground. Then God said, I now give you all the plant life on the earth to yield seeds and all of the trees whose fruit produces its seeds within it. These will be your food. To all wildlife, to all the birds in the sky, and to everything crawling on the ground, to everything that breathes, I give all the green grasses for food. And that's what's happening. God saw everything he said he had made. It was supremely good. There was evening and there was morning the sixth day. The heavens and the earth and all who live in them were completed. On the sixth day, God completed all the work that he had done. And on the seventh day, God rested from all the work that he had done. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on, the God, on it, God rested from all the work of creation. This is the account of the heavens and the earth and they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who
who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. is from Exodus. As Pharaoh drew closer, the Israelites looked back and saw the Egyptians marching towards them. The Israelites were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, weren't there enough graves in Egypt that you took us away to die in the desert? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt like this? Didn't we tell you the same things in Egypt? Leave us alone. Let us work for the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to work for the Egyptians than to die in the desert. But Moses said to his people, don't be afraid. Stand your ground. The watch of the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You just keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to get moving. As you lift up your shepherd's rod, stretch out your hands over the sea, and split it into two, so that the Israelites can go into the sea on dry ground. But me, I'll make the Egyptians stubborn, so that they will go after them, and I'll gain honor at the expense of Pharaoh, all his army, his chariots, and his cavalry. The Egyptians will know that I am Lord and that I gain honor in the expense of the Pharaoh, his chariots, and his cavalry. God's messenger, who had been in front of Israel's camp, moved and went behind them. A column of cloud moved from the front and took its place behind them. It stood between Egypt's camp and Israel's camp. The cloud remained there, and when darkness fell, it lit up the night. They didn't come near each other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord pushed the sea back, and a strong east wind all night, turning the sea into dry land. The waters were split into two. The Israelites walked into the sea on dry ground. The waters formed a wall for, for them on the right hand and on their left. The Egyptians chased them and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and cavalry. As the morning approached, the Lord looked down on the Egyptian camp from the column of lightning and clouds that he threw the Egyptian camp into a panic. The Lord jammed their chariot wheels so that they wouldn't turn easily. The Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites because God is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hands over the sea so that the water comes back and covers the Egyptians, their chariots and their cavalry. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. At daybreak, the sea returned to its normal depth. The Egyptians were driving towards it. The Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the cavalry. Pharaoh's entire army had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. The Israelites, however, walked on dry land through the sea. The waters formed a wall for them on their right hand and on the left. The Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians that day. Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the amazing power of the Lord against the Egyptians. The people were in awe of the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand. All the women followed her playing tambourines and dancing. Miriam sang the refrain back to them. Sing to the Lord for an overflowing victory. Horse and rider he threw into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. O God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even in our own day. 
by the power of your mighty arm, you once delivered your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh, a sign for us that the salvation offered to everyone by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of earth may partake in the salvation of the Israelites and together dance on the safe side of the sea through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. All of you who are thirsty, come to the water. Whoever has no money, come, buy food and eat. Without money, at no cost, buy wine and milk. Why spend money for what isn't food and your earnings for what doesn't satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Enjoy the riches of feast. Listen and come to me. Listen and you will live. You will make an everlasting covenant with you my faithful loyalty to David. Look, I made him a witness to the peoples, a prince, a commander of peoples. Look, you will call a nation you don't know, a nation you don't know will run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord when you can still be found. Call him while he is yet near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the sinful their schemes. Let them return to the Lord, so that he may have mercy on them, to our God, because he is generous with, with forgiveness. My plans aren't your plans, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord, just as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways, and my plans than your plans. Just as the rain and the snow come down from the sky, and don't return there without watering the earth, Making it, making it conceive and yield plants, and providing seed to the sower and food to the eater. So is my word that comes from my mouth. It does not return to me empty. Instead, it does what I want and accomplishes what I intend. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, you created all things by the power of your word, and you renew the whole earth by your spirit. Give now the water of life to all who thirst for you, that rejoicing in your covenant and of mercy, you may bring forth abundant fruit, fruit through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The fourth reading is from Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar, made a gold statue. It was 90 feet high and nine feet wide. He set it up in the Dura Valley in the province of Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar then ordered the chief administrators, ministers, governors, counselors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the provincial officials to assemble and come to the dedication of the statue that had been set up. So the chief administrators, ministers, governors, counselors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the statue of King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. They stood in front of the statue that the king had set up, and Herod proclaimed loudly, people, nations, and languages, this is what you must do. When you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the flute, and every other kind of instrument, you must bow down and worship the gold statue that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Anyone who will not bow down and worship will be immediately thrown into the furnace of fiery flames. So because of this order, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, the pipe, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the flute, or every, any other kind of instrument, all the people of the nations and languages bowed down and worshiped the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At that moment, some Chaldeans came forward, seizing a chance to attack the Jews. And they said to King Nebuchadnezzar, 
Long live the king, your majesty. You gave a command that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the pipe, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the flute, and every other musical instrument should bow down and worship the gold statue. Anyone who wouldn't bow down and worship would be thrown into the furnace of flaming fire. Now there were some Jews, ones you appointed to administer the province of Babylon, specifically Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have ignored your command. They don't serve your gods, and they don't worship the gold statue you have set up. In a violent rage, Nebuchadnezzar ordered them to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it is true that you don't serve the God of the worship of the gold statue I've set up. If you are now ready to do so, bow down and worship the gold statue that I have made when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the zither, the lyre, the flute, the harp, and every other kind of musical instrument. But if you won't worship it, you will be thrown straight into the furnace of fiery flame. Then what God will rescue you from my power? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar, We don't need to answer your question. If our God, the one we serve, is able to rescue us from the furnace of flaming fire and from your power, your majesty, let him rescue us. But if he doesn't, know this for certain, your majesty, you will never serve our God or worship the gold statue you set up. Nebuchadnezzar was filled with rage. His face was twisted beyond recognition because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In response, he commanded that the furnace be heated to seven times its normal heat. He told them, he told some of the strongest men in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the furnace of fire and flames. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were bound, still dressed in their clothes, and thrown into the furnace of flaming fire. Now the king's command had been rash, and the furnace was heated to such an extreme that the fire's flames killed the very men who carried Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to it. So these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound onto the furnace of flaming fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in shock and said to his associates, didn't we throw three men bound into the fire? They answered the king, certainly, your majesty. He replied, look, I see four men unbound walking around inside the fire and they aren't hurt. And the fourth one looks like one of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar went near the opening of the furnace of flaming fire and said, Shab Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. The chief administrators, ministers, governors, and the king's associates crowded around them to look at them. The fire hadn't done anything to them. Not a hair was singed. Their garments looked the same as before. They didn't even smell like fire. Nebuchadnezzar declared, May the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be praised. He sent his messenger to rescue his servants who trusted him. They ignored the king's order, sacrificing their bodies because they wouldn't serve or even worship any other god but their god. I now issue to a decree to everyone, person, people, nations, and language, whoever speaks, disrespectful about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God will be to torn limb from limb, and their houses made of trash heap, because there is no other God that can rescue you like this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the hope of the world, the proclamation of your prophets, you declare to us word of salvation. By the grace of your spirit, increase the devotion of all the baptized that strengthened by your presence, we may withstand hardship and sorrow and be united with your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
Whenever I say, your steadfast love fills the earth, please repeat that. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. Clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, fountain of living water, source of mercy, tender and mighty, you are clothed with majesty and splendor. Your steadfast love fills the earth. Your love flows through water, satisfying the thirst of all living things, sustaining life in this community, nourishing and delighting us. We bless you for these gifts of water, for Lake Mincy, Echo Lake, and the Delaware River. Your steadfast love fills the earth. Your love flows through water, a sign of your saving power. Noah and the animals survive the flood. Hagar discovers your well. The Israelites escape through the sea, and they drink from your gushing rock. Naaman washes his leprosy away, and the Samaritan woman will never be thirsty again. Your steadfast love fills the earth. Your love flows through the water of baptism, joined to your life-giving word, your well of mercy and cleansing flood, your sea of deliverance from death into life, your healing river washing sin away, your living water springing up to eternal life. Your steadfast love fills the earth. Shower us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your love. Clothe us and all your people with grace. Embolden us to do justice. Bless us to love mercy. Guide us to walk humbly with you, whom we thank and praise through Jesus Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus, in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say together, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? If so, say together, I so believe. I, I so believe. believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, who descended into hell, who on the third day rose again, who ascended into heaven, who is seated at the right hand of the Father, and who will judge to come to judge the living and the dead? If so, say together, I so believe. I so believe. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? If so, say together, I so believe. I so believe. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, say together, I do and I ask God to help and guide me. I do and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? If so, say together, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in your people the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen.
All of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in death like this, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like this. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in, Je in Christ Jesus. Christ has risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Ring your bells if you got them. Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. After the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices in order to anoint the body of Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been asking one another, who will roll away the stone from the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. And looking inside, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So the women went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, 
because they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. The empty, the empty tomb is enough. That's the message Mark is telling us today at the very end of his gospel. The empty tomb is enough. And I am so glad that we're reading Mark's version of the resurrection story this year because that's the message I think we need to hear right now. The empty tomb is enough. Now you might be surprised to, to hear that I just read the end of Mark's Gospel. There's nothing more after this. Jesus never appears after the resurrection. But what about that time when Jesus told Thomas to put his fingers in the nails of his hands? Well, that's in John's Gospel. What about the time when Jesus sent the apostles to make disciples of all nations, baptizing and teaching? That's in Matthew's Gospel. And what about the time Jesus rose up into the clouds? Luke. Each of the Gospels tells the story of Jesus differently. And part of the reason for this is that the Gospels are not biographies of Jesus. The evangelists didn't write them in order to give us a history lesson. They were written so the Holy Spirit might kindle faith within us. John said it well in his Gospel when he wrote, now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel writers weren't trying to include everything, but they did include everything they thought would be necessary to kindle your faith. And Mark apparently thought that the appearances of Jesus after the resurrection weren't necessary. Now, I doubt he was unaware of the stories of Jesus' appearance, and I doubt he was trying to say that they didn't happen, but I think he was trying to say that the story is enough without them. So they went out and fled from the empty tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And you could be forgiven for asking, how is that enough? And you could be forgiven for asking, what kind of an ending even is that? I believe it's exactly the kind of ending we need this year. If 2020 was the year of COVID, and it was, then 2021 is supposed to be the year of COVID recovery, the year that things go back to normal. But I wonder, and maybe so do you, where is this normal? And when? When will enough people be vaccinated? When will we be able to stop wearing masks? Will we get annual COVID shots like we do for the flu? What about the COVID variants we keep hearing about? What will school look like this fall? What will local business look like? What will travel look like? What will church look like? We are on edge right now. We see that the end is coming and that's exciting. <laughs> but we don't know when and we don't know what it will look like and that's frightening exciting and frightening amazement and terror and they went out and fled the empty tomb because terror and amazement had seized them and the good news today is that that is enough the promise of new life doesn't mean we have to see Jesus raised right away. The empty tomb is enough. The women running is enough. It's enough because we know something else. We know that Jesus is waiting for them in Galilee, even though we don't get to see it. We know he's there. At least we know this if we remember one thing and believe one thing. The thing we have to remember is the thing the young man in the tomb told the women. He said to them, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Jesus said that to the disciples in the story we heard last week on Passion Sunday. 
Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters, but after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Remember that? Well, in case you forgot, Mark reminds us through the young man in the tomb. And the thing we have to believe is that Jesus fulfills promises. If Jesus fulfills his promises, then he is doing what he said. He is raised up, and he is going ahead of them to Galilee, just as he said. And somehow, even though we don't know how, Mary Magdalene and the others will tell Peter and the disciples, and they will all see Jesus there. It is enough to know that the tomb is empty, as long as we remember the promises Jesus made and trust that he fulfills those promises. It's enough to know that the tomb is empty if we but have faith. And that's the good news for us right now, this year. Because with all the uncertainties about when COVID will be over and how COVID will be over and what our lives will look like then, we know one thing. Jesus has promised to be with us. And if we trust that promise, then we know it will be okay. Jesus will accompany us, inspire us, comfort us, challenge us, embrace us. I can remember when I was making a very big decision in my life. I was a senior in college and I was deciding where to go to seminary. I had narrowed it down to two seminaries and I'd been accepted to both, the Lutheran seminaries at Philadelphia and Chicago. And I couldn't decide. I really wanted to stay in Pennsylvania, close to family and friends, but the school in Chicago really felt like a better fit in many ways. So I went to my college chapel one night and prayed so hard for God to give me a sign, an answer, a solution. But I just went home that night feeling worse, feeling like I really wanted to go to Philadelphia, but scared that that was the wrong choice that I would be disappointing and obey, disobeying God. So I went back to the chapel the next night to pray again. I planned to stay there as long as I needed to. I sat down and almost immediately, I heard God's voice whisper to me, why are you back here again? You already made your choice. I'll see you in Philadelphia. And that was that. Jesus promised to be there wherever I went. And of course he was. And I'll never know how different my life would have been had I gone to Chicago. But it's okay, because Jesus was waiting for me where I did go. The tomb is empty. We can't see Jesus right now because he's out there waiting for us. And that is enough. Amen. On this most holy night, let us pray to God for the church, the earth, and all in need, that the whole world may know the, res <coughs> that the resurrection that God promises to give. We pray for the church throughout the world. For the spirit of resurrection within our believers. for the newly baptized, for the health of plants and animals, for all who care for the earth, for peace throughout the world, for an increase of justice in every land, For those in need, those close to home, those far away. For those who are hungry. For the sick and the dying. For our neighborhood. For the desires of our hearts. 
We give thanks for the lives of all the faithful who have died and who now enjoy the full presence of God. We pray that at the end we may join them in the resurrection. On this most holy night, O God of resurrection, receive our prayer and praises, and give us your spirit, that our lives may be signs of the new life you give. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And share with one another a sign of God's peace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name. This is the day that in joy and delight we join with all the angels in heaven and all the creatures on earth to sing our praise and thanksgiving to you, all holy and mighty and glorious God. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. This is the day that you gave light to the earth. This is the day you saved the Israelites through the sea and with your pillar of fire led them to freedom. Now every night is as bright as day and that light is Christ. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. This is the day that you broke the chains of death. This is the day that marrying heaven to earth you washed away sin, rescued us from evil, and brought us your peace. The Lamb who was slain has begun to reign, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. On the night before he died, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me.
On this day, send us the power of your Holy Spirit. Revive us with the body and blood of our risen Savior. Illumine our lives with your presence and shine your morning star over the whole human race, for that light is Christ. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. All holy and mighty and glorious God, radiant Father, victorious Son, and shining Spirit, we bless your salvation, we sing of your mercy, and we praise your victory through all time and space, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Amen. I invite you all to take out the communion cup you have. Please open the bread side, at least if your fingers aren't as cold as mine, jeez. <laughs> you take the bread out and put it in your hand. The body of Christ given for you. invite you to open the wine side. Please don't pour the wine into your hand. I told you I wouldn't be able to stop myself from saying that. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Mighty and compassionate God, you have brought us over from death to life through your Son, our risen Savior. And you have fed us with the food of life in the sacraments of his body and his blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The blessing of the Lord God Almighty, the blessing of Christ, the Lamb who was slain, and the blessing of the Spirit of Truth be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the risen Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. <laughs> 